Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, the 28th of September. We're a few minutes late. Uh, just trying to get, get on to Zoom, a few other things. Um, we've got a, a little bit of a lighter agenda tonight. We've got our, our minutes. We've got our COVID-19 update. Um, I don't know if we have anything to discuss right now on uh, the benchmark for employee wages. That's a kind of an ongoing placeholder. Um, any select board and town administrator updates, uh, discussion under new business of liquor license fees, some boat ramp permit request, uh, the 2021 holiday schedule. And I see a select board scheduling item on there. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's dive right into the fun tonight. Um, for our minutes for September 21st is our first item out there. <clears throat> yes, I'll pull that you up. Can, yeah, if you can pull up. Because we're, we're having some difficulties connecting to our SharePoint site at the moment. So, <clears throat> all right. We have a, whoop, yeah, there they go. Is that not showing up? Nope, I can see it. Yeah, can you guys see it? I got it, Dave. Dave. That's good. Awesome. All right. Uh, do we have a motion on the minutes? Motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <clears throat> and then we've got uh, Laurie out there, I see, for our COVID update. I don't know if you have any updates this week. I do, um, oh. unfortunately. Um, I was notified on Tuesday we have a new close contact and then on Thursday, Friday, and today we have three new positive cases in town. Really? Okay. Yeah. The, right. I don't know if it's a result of more people being tested yep. and the numbers are starting to show or if it's Can something actually increase. Else. Yeah. Well, the numbers are trending upward in a lot of parts of the country, so... They are, yes. That is true. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, do we have any anything else related at all, Jeff, right now, especially in like with the students and things like that? Uh, ju just a couple of notes. Um, it was in the papers that I think about 15 uh, UMass students tested positive last week. Um, there were some small, uh, I guess, group gatherings where there's been some spread. Uh, um, yep. And uh, I'm continuing to uh, work on the reopening plan. Um, the Board of Health recommended a town office building face covering policy, um, which I think we have that figured out. Um, and then the protocols for if somebody um, who came into to town hall tests positive, what steps we're going to take. Yep. And I think that um, we're just working out the, the kinks in that, um, or not the kinks, but, you know, making sure we have everything covered. Um, and then uh, wanted to mention that last week um, there were new rules that the governor set for restaurants uh, now allowing groups of up to 10 people tables of up to 10 people in restaurants uh, both indoors and outdoors and also allowing food service at bars in restaurants so you can socially distance sit at a bar and get food um, okay. you can't just get drinks at a bar but so that part hasn't changed still so folks should remember that yep. correct um, also last week, we submitted our quarterly report for the Coronavirus Relief Fund, which is the CARES Act funds um, through, through the state. And then there's going to be a briefing this week. And I think um, in two weeks is where the next round of funds is going to open up again for municipalities. So starting to prepare for that. Could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yeah, please. So, uh, EMD, what's the speed at which we're seeing information? So, if there's a, a um, if there's a concern of a local uh, cell, as I think we're hearing them called in the news, what's cluster, the speed yes. cluster cluster that we end up seeing 
that information upon reporting and it's from the state or it's from local agencies strictly through the state? It is from our public health nurse, Cheryl Volpe. Our public health nurse. Got yes. it. She and so Monday turns, in, yep. Monday turns into we hear by Friday or we hear the day after? No, she texts me as soon as she knows. So Excellent. any time of day or night, I expect a text from her and then I ship it out to the fire chief and the police chief. Okay. I asked that to inform the public mainly. I'm not yes. entirely sure how how keyed in people are at the speed of the transfer the transfer of information in this current Very fast. environment. Very good. Thanks Very so much. Fast. I really appreciate that. Yep. Thanks. That's a good question. <clears throat> Especially with cases popping up now and UMass a little bit more and things like that. So well, yes. you, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, you read it in the mm -hmm. newspaper and you think, oh my God, that's two days old. Well, no, it's actually today. Yeah. Yes. Yep, that's true. So, uh, Jeff, one of the things that the university is doing is going around to uh, apartment complexes and actually in, in areas that students are living in having group meetings with them. Nice. We, were you able to reach out to the town to maybe schedule one for a couple of our uh, um, locations in town? Uh, they did not make me aware that they were doing that, um, but I'm happy to reach out to them and ask them to do that. Yeah, they, just did, they just did one in North Amherst at uh, the new new uh, facility right behind Coles. Oh yeah, okay. Yep. Um, Sounds like homework. Yeah, especially with the uh, 116 flats, north flats or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. Well, hopefully next time you're on, Laurie, we won't have any more up numbers, you know. I hope so, too, but it, like I said, I don't know if it's a result of more testing or just right. more exposure. I, I think they have been doing a, a fair amount of testing over at the university, too, from what I've been understanding, yeah. right? Uh, so. uh, actually, what, what's your response? If you're a student that lives off campus and you live in one of the surrounding towns, you're supposed to be getting tested once or twice a week. Okay. And they're they're and they're track and they're and the university is tracking them. Right. Um, all right. Anybody have any other up uh, COVID related updates at all? No. All right. Move on to our uh, next discussion: the the benchmarks for employee wage adjustments. Have we got any? Um, any interesting new financial information? Uh, the state is still hoping to finalize uh, fiscal year 21 budget in uh, October. Okay. That's their plan. Um, on a local level, since we're nearing the tax deadline, I did ask um, the treasurer collector just sort of where, where we sat with the, you know, a couple of days left. Right. And um, of the full commitment, I think we, we've been able to um, take in and account for 85% of, of what that commitment is so far. So uh -huh. um, how does that compare with you, like under normal circumstances? To, I don't know if she gave you, she may not have given you that comparison. Yeah, but... I, I, I didn't get that information, um, but I did. I at least wanted to give some some information <laughs> ahead yep, of time. No, that's as, good. As you know, as we get closer, um, and I, I guess as another reminder that if if for folks that that real estate taxes are due and and water taxes as well on October first, and there's a drop box outside of um, the, the back of the town office building, uh, as well as hours when uh, the treasurer you want to pay in cash and you can pay online. Right. Thank you. That's good. And I, I noticed there was a couple of divergent uh, 
state estimates there. We had that one out of Tufts that was coming in at like one point something billion versus the other one. So we'll have to see where it actually pans out. Yeah. On the state level. <clears throat> but uh, either way, it's probably not good if it's a billion plus. <laughs> right, exactly. Plus revenue. Yep. That is true. <clears throat> All right. Um, then we reach out to the select board updates. I'll start with Tom only because he's the next head I see down in the row there. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was at a um, South County Senior Center meeting tonight and the, the, we're, we're trying, um, our number one priority right now is to uh, get the foot care clinic back up and operational. So we're working, we're working on that and, 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 and again, foot care for, for uh, the senior center, um, it, it's a huge concern. Um, and there's many of, many of the, our, our members and members of our community that take part in this and usually in excess of 40 people a month. So it's a very well attended clinic. So we're, 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 trying, we're trying to get that with uh, working with the uh, Town of Deerfield Board of Health and the Senior Center and our director and, and staff to try to get that. And, and we, we think we're moving closer, but we're, we're, we're working on it. So, so you should be able to, we should be seeing some more information very soon on that. Um, the second thing is I would like to thank the Franklin County Solid Waste um, group. I, we've been involved with Jan and Mean for a long time. And I think of all the programs that Franklin County runs, this Franklin County Waste is, if, if not the best, one of the, the, the best programs that run countywide with, with all the communities. And this past weekend, bless you. Bless you. Me. thank you. This, this past weekend, they had a, uh, um, uh, solid, solid waste was have a thing up at GCC where you could bring household um, chemicals such as uh, oil-based paint, uh, antifreeze, motor oil, creosol, things that are, are very difficult to get rid of or try to get rid of antifreeze. You can't get rid of antifreeze very easily. Um, and they ran very, they had I think Jan, I was talking to Jan, I think she said they had the largest turnout ever, 375 households came oh, that's great. Um, to turn in stuff. Um, I, I would just highly recommend um, in, in going to the Town of Sunderland webpage may, may not be the most um, exciting thing in one's life, but I would recommend doing it because there's there's things that come up like this hazardous waste where it cost me $36 and I got rid of all kinds of stuff um, along with 374 other households. So I, I would highly recommend looking and I, I just want to say Jan and her staff do a really, really great job up there. That's it for tonight, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I would I would definitely second that. I agree. That's a great uh, a great thing, especially nowadays. <clears throat> any, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, I'm losing my voice tonight. Have any updates, Scott? This week? Uh, no, no. I was out last week, uh, right. spending a thirtieth anniversary with my wife. So the only update you're getting is that. <laughs> there you go. That's a good update. Thanks. All right. Um, how about you, Jeff? It's been quiet all week, right? <laughs> quiet but busy. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. Couple things. Um, we're uh, going to get an update from the schools at, at the next meeting next week. Um, oh, good. I think that's going to be uh, Principal Barshevsky. And, and then somebody from Frontier, either the principal or, or the superintendent or um, a school committee member, just to hear how uh, this, the phase in um, is going in the hybrid learning and um, 
you know, if there's anything that, that we can do to be helpful um, with the beginning of the school year. Um, so I thought it'd be a good time to do that. Uh, I think I mentioned last week that I was on a call on the Franklin County Emergency Communication System group um, yeah. about the migration of the radios to, to the statewide system. And um, one of the things that, that there's probably going to be a cost associated with that. So um, talking, uh, the, the police chief and the fire chief and I are trying to see if um, those costs, we could look at a community compact IT grant because it's been several years since we did that to defer or completely pay for those radio upgrades. Um, because that could be fairly expensive. Um, so we're, we're looking at how we might be able to use grant funds for that. Um, and then I did have an update from the town clerk who wanted to be here, um, but I uh, told her I'd be happy to give her update. So if you'll you. indulge me. Um, the ballots for the November 3rd general election, presidential election, have not arrived in Sunderland yet, um, but there is a sample ballot available on our website. Um, if you click voter information at the bottom of the main page, uh, all the information for the presidential election is up there. The ballot has the candidates. It has uh, two ballot questions as well as two non-binding questions. And a red book was mailed to every household explaining um, what the questions are. Voters have three choices to vote and may choose the one that works best for them. There's mail-in voting, there's early voting in person in the clerk's office, and then in person on election day uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. Um, applications for early voting and uh, mail-in voting, excuse me, uh, and early voting hours are available on the website. Um, so you can check that out. I think it's two weeks of early in-person voting um, beginning Saturday, October 17th and going through Friday, October 30th. Um, and again, 12 School Street. And then the last day to register to vote would be October 24th. Um, so that's another important date. And then um, there's also two people um, to appoint as election officers. Is that something? Right. Um, we have take up names? now in, during one of my updates. I do. It, it is uh, Janet Bergeron and Beth Robert. Motion. We have a second for the nomination. I'll second. All those in favor for Janet and Beth for nomination? Aye. 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 All right, and thanks. I'd like to extend uh, our thanks out to them for helping out. It's important, just like every other election. So, and thanks for mentioning those dates. That's great. And please, folks, check the website and everything for information. And if you're going to vote by mail, try to do so as early as possible. Um, do we have any public comments now that we've reached that section of the evening? Just as a separate topic, if we do. All right. Um, and now I see our next item is liquor license fees. I think we we're going to discuss uh, that from one of our previous ones, right, Jeff? Yes. So um, at the last meeting, we found out that some towns were considering prorating liquor license fees because uh, closure of businesses, especially bars that haven't been open since March. And uh, last week, I think there was only one town that I was aware of that was doing this. I saw in the paper today that Hadley's um, considering prorating, uh, reducing liquor license fees and actually restaurant licenses and common VIX and a, a lot more by 25%. Um, and I got a call from um, 
uh, staff at the town of Amherst that are also looking into this issue um, okay. as well. And I think the the proposal last week that was talked about was reducing the fee for liquor licenses by half for um, bars in town. And I reached out to, to the bar owner who was very appreciative of, of that gesture and said it would be uh, helpful given that that the bar hasn't been open in, in such a long time and is not likely to reopen right. um, until there's a vaccine. Right, it, it makes sense for, an, is, for a, an establishment that hasn't even been able to open at all. You know, they haven't had any recourse in that, in that respect. So I can see that. So Mr. Chair, if I could, mm, Jeff, could you, could you give us the average liquor license fee? So again, the public knows what we're talking about. Yes, so uh, the liquor license fee for on-premise consumption is uh, $1,400 a year and off-premise, no, I may be getting this wrong. I mean, I, all alcohol, sorry, all alcohol is $1,400 a year and then wine and, and malt is $700 a year. Okay, um, and, and that, in, that includes an annual inspection, public safety, board of health, there's, there's a town cost aspect to that fee it's not just the sake of serving and you have to send the town a check there is overhead for the town associated with that yeah right, right. i think that's important to bear in mind right because it's almost like a usage fee in that respect to, to cover those costs very much that way yep okay. so what's the recommendation or the discussion I missed obviously last week. So what was the discussion last week? I think we're definitely at least looking at it for in places that have been closed completely and haven't been able to open at all. I think that's definitely something worth looking at. We just didn't think it was, we just didn't think it was fair, Scott, that a business that's not not open should be paying full price for a fee for a service that he's not getting. Right, right. right. And, totally but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, if you, uh, would our people go? Would our inspectors actually go into the bar that's not being run right now? Because it's not. Yeah. It's not really. It's not really. It's not really set up to be in right, operate. Right. So what would a inspection right now? I would think that you'd have an inspection before you go back to business, but. Right. Well, you right now. You're. you're you're headed down the path that I was, I was on Tom. And that is, so if we waive the fee for the year, remember this is a fee for the coming year, not the current year. So how do we go about an equitable approach, recognizing that we're, we want to help the businesses that are in town to the extent that we can. So is it a uh, partial fee? The recommendation was that we, we we find out how much a town what we talked about that we 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 talked about it, we determined that we'd find out how much it actually costs the town yep. to, to and what would this what are the state's charges mm -hmm. to the town as well. Right, because there's a filing, yep. And and right. so figure out what we actually owe or what's going to be charged and then base our decision on that. I can right, get behind that. Yeah, because we, I mean, we have had to do some work, you think, with, with the places that have been open and, mm -hmm. you know, some different things. So, yeah, I think it's definitely something to talk about. The only other thing I would add is that in the given circumstance that whatever fee reduction there is, we do without precedent. We go back to the fees at the end. Right. If there is an end. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't mean that, you know, in a snarky way. But oh, right, Scott, there will be an end. I understand. Just okay. a matter of when, right? Right. Scott, you just but. made you just made people turn red out there in anger. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that means they're paying attention. Uh, excellent point. <laughs> so I can get behind a you know a reduction in fees once we know what our overhead our actual town costs are. Um, and once those town costs are, you know, understood, it can be done without, you know, without setting precedent and we go back to fees uh, in a normal business cycle. Okay. So when do we find out those costs? Next week? Yes. 
Okay. That'll be my goal. Yep. Okay. Excellent. And then we can make a decision on that. That'd be great. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, guys. I see next up we have boat ramp permit fee requests for October 19th and October 20th. Yes. Those are good dates. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, there, yes, there was a request um, for six vehicles for all out adventures to do a canoe and kayak event. Uh, they had applied to do something in September. Um, that was going to be much larger. And um, I think the the plan is to do the 19th and then the 20th is sort of a... Uh, okay. <laughs> only question or, or concern, um, the state mentioned that I think that there's uh, five four or five vehicle limitation for reservations um, at, because they wanted to reserve a number of uh, vehicle spots for the general public that just shows up. They didn't want them necessarily all take. So they wanted to um, confirm that that was okay, okay. with the town so to, to go over that, from, that limit. That comes from what agency? Fish and Game? Yes. Yeah. So we, we spent in the last two years a fair amount on parking and expanding that parking out behind the building. And I guess the question that would come to mind immediately is knowing that it's a weekend, knowing that the libraries got restricted, well, lesser hours and lesser traffic. Um, this building obviously is closed. Why would six vehicles parked out back here be a trigger other than a question? And I guess that's Great. what I'm hearing. Seems like we have the space. Now they roll in with, you know, six 53 foot rigs with 200 kayaks. That's another animal. You're talking here about a total of 12 boats total. And these aren't motorized. It seems to me we would have the space for it at first blush. Maybe I'm missing something. And especially if some of them have two kayaks on a car top. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it was more about ensuring that there's adequate space for people who um, mm -hmm. aren't part of this party. Right? right, right. That makes perfect sense. So would signage be helpful that we direct this party to a section back here behind the town office building that says, hey, you're... 12 boats, yeah. i.e. four vehicles, maybe six vehicles. You guys, if it's part of your permit, you come back here. And that still leaves the space that's by the library, which was originally set up. Right, for that use. For that use. <clears throat> We're talking about the fall. It is New England. People are out. Yep. That's probably a good idea. And then, we, and then that gives us a press up. Excuse me, a precedent for procedure going forwards, too. Are there any athletic field uses that day? Nope. I, I, checked, with, um, I, I checked with the recreation director, and he did not have any concerns with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if, if I could, Mr. Chair, I'd be fine yeah. saying, with respect to the permit, designate these spots back here, drop off, pick up, all your parking ends up out here. Yep. I think that's a good idea. Yep. Okay. I'd make that motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Three to zero on that one. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we have our 2021 holiday schedule. There's holidays? That, that's a rumor anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, hey, and there it is. Have so we, we added any? Uh, you know, I don't think so. Can <laughs> we add just, any? Just, Maybe hey, is a question. Every, every new town administrator, we get another holiday. What's going on? <laughs> uh, so, so there, there is a uh -huh. uh, outstanding question about um, June nineteenth, and okay. that was declared a state holiday. Uh, a, 
uh, and there was legislation passed and right. um, that is not included in this legal holiday because I am I am unsure how it's being handled um, by, by municipalities, but uh, the, the building will be closed um, per the governor's orders and the legislation. Um, the, I think it's going to be June 20th because I think June 19th falls on a Sunday. Monday. So I would guess we'd need to add it to the list then if we're closed. I think we would need to negotiate that with organized labor. Yep. Okay. So, so I would. Firms and we have to. Uh, if it's declared as a state holiday and it's not on the list, then we've got to talk to organized labor before we post anything. They yep. may not want it. But that's the point. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Uh, move the list as it's presented, knowing that we have homework. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All those in favor as presented? Aye. Aye. So we can check on that, Jeff, and then we can yep. make any adjustments as necessary. I forgot they added that this year. Yeah. That's good. Uh, sorry, I'm just catching up from the votes. Yep, um, that's right. And yeah, part of the other homework is uh, amending, if so, amending the personnel bylaw as well. Right. The yep. Town meeting. So. Yep, we can add that to our list. <clears throat> and then sort of in a related, we've got the select board scheduling, I see. Yeah, so um, one of the things that I, I think would be helpful um, is to bring in department heads on a regular basis to, to update the select board. Um, and, and so there can be, you know, just general updates or, or if it's highway, updates on specific projects or, um, you know, face-to-face -face time um, for the select board and the department heads, as well as for the public. Right. Um, and so I, I've reached out to the highway superintendent, um, the police chief, the library director, um, and the elementary school principal um, as, as a starting point and was thinking that, you know, off the top of my head, and I guess this is a, a question for the select board, how, how frequently you want to see people, um, who else do you want to see? And I was thinking sort of in every other month, you know, maybe the first and third meetings of a month, we would bring one of them in um, and they would meet every other month. Um, but the, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this. <laughs> Uh, for example, highway would come in the first uh, meeting of every odd month. Police would come in the third meeting of every odd month. Um, and then even months would be the library director on the first. So uh, trying to gotcha. schedule that, but obviously that would depend on what departments you want to see and the frequency and what would be most helpful to, to the select board. And I think, and like you touched on earlier, I think the viewers too, I think it's a good way to touch base with, with the, you know, public safety and other, and the schools and everything. And we used to do that too, at one point, we kind of got away from it a little bit over the years, I think. So I guess I would ask Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, about frequency, right? Yep. We, we know that there's some goals that are set. There are some self-determined goals by each of the departments. And then the reporting structure is such that we want to be able to report to the public. Currently, the department heads report to, in the case of director library, reports to trustees. They're very well keyed in. Uh, our department heads, is, is there a reason to have this more frequently than on a quarterly basis for any given department head? Not that you want to have it devolved into an annual report. We do that in the spring. Right. But somehow, over the course of our six key departments, do we want to have some kind of rotation that makes sense that doesn't seem onerous or at, and, want it, and want it to be keyed in with tasks right. completed and goals ahead? Right. I can't see meeting with a with a with a personally speaking. I can't see meeting with a highway superintendent more than a couple of three times a year, right? There's the seasons that we report on and we hear about yeah, exactly. that. Exactly. 
We hear right. about them from the budgets uh, all the way through the budget process. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just uh, free associating a little bit right now, but I'm thinking about the total number of department heads. If we have a frequency of three to four times a year, you can set up a schedule pretty easily. Yep. I think that might be a... Was it, was it the intent to have it more frequently than that? If, if that's the case, then we can have that in, in writing in some cases. That's true. You could just submit something, but, but well, it, the goal, the goal was that, and like the highway superintendent should discuss, put forward the plan. So it, it's a, a notice to the community on what he scheduled to be doing for, for chapter 90 spending. Yep. Um, then, then, so that's 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 one meeting. The second meeting that we would have with him, <coughs> would would he be coming? He'd be coming in for for his budget. The the third, you know, and 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 we do that already. The third meeting, he comes in and and asks us, um, uh, basically gives us uh, an idea of how his year is going and what what should be. What should be on the on the docket for the following year and any troubles? So there's there's kind of you know you say three or four times a year is fine. It doesn't have and again I said it doesn't have to be every other month, but the idea is that he would be in and people would be informed of what of what the highway do. Same thing with the police. I think there's more I think there's more awareness right now of the police and and asking you know <coughs> there's going to be big things with the police in the next couple of years outside of what's happening nationwide but with the uh the uh the radios and and yep. and how that how that is going to change so so that that would be a couple two three meetings again the budget the he's doing a new uh, hourly schedule so there there should be a report on that so i think there's more than enough reasons to have the department heads come in now what department heads you may ask I mean, do you need the school to come in four times a year? Probably not. A couple times is more than enough. The the li library? No, I don't think so. They they have the, they they respond to the board of trustees. So, I I just think that there's there's a need for us to to communicate and also listen, have our community members listen to to what our department heads are saying and also get to know the department heads as well, Scott. Right. Yeah, no, I think especially. I think we're largely we're largely aligned, Tom, in the communication aspect. My line of questioning was about the frequency, and I think your outlining would pretty much reinforce what my questioning was. You know, how much is too much? Right. You don't. And you don't. It, it, it's a first twenty-two stop. If if you if you if you schedule it, it's easy to cancel. If you right. don't schedule it, you may never schedule it. Bingo. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yep. That's an excellent way to put it. David said so much so in his his earlier, the chair said, well, we used to do that. Well, what happened? Uh, well, we stopped, we stopped scheduling it. That's exactly. What, yep. Sure, you can always cancel. Right. Or, you know, if, if it comes up like, uh, like Scott mentioned, you could do a, just a written, you know, I can't make it tonight for whatever, but here's a quick update on paper for what's going on. Right. So this was, and, and, and it kind of sounds like we're sort of landing on a, you know, I'll say quarterly, depending on the group, but yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of, kind of sounds around that. And some groups more than others have more exposure to the public in general, like the schools, like, um, Tom was saying, you know, they, they've already got a number of communication methods. But uh, think about it. schools, police, fire, highway, boards of health, you know, in the particular in this time, while well, he waves his arms. I, yeah, um, trying to get you know, that these, light to come back. These are all good. We can't overly communicate these days. It's really right. important. Right. So, you know, Jeff, if, if I could, Mr. Chair, suggest mm -hmm. that a, a proposed schedule comes up that we could send out to the department head so they actually have time to think about what they want to say. Last thing you want is updates to become simply, you know, boring. Actually, right. in, in some categories, you want them to really be boring. <laughs> That's true, because <laughs> excitement usually means problems in some exactly cases. Right. Yep. That's true. 
clerk, yeah. you know, for instance, uh, the town clerk, you know, the, town, the town clerk could give us, especially now with Zoom, and probably in the future, but the town, the town clerk could talk for, for 30 minutes about changes on voting, and, and I would highly recommend that we have the town clerk come in. I would agree. Or zoom in and, and explain to people, you know, how about the changes about, and, and, uh, and how to vote. I mean, do you vote, you know, the people, are you, are you voting absentee or are you voting mail? What's the, what's the difference between mail-in ballots and, and, and uh, absentee ballots? You, you know, those are, those are, and those are the kind of things that we, sh we really should, especially now, we should really be talking to, to the residents of our town because the election's only, what, six weeks away or less. Right. Sounds like we got our first one right there. Sorry, Wendy. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's, it, you're right. It's very important now. Time. Well, if, but you think about it. If you think, I, I mean, people, I, I mean, and, and again, I, see, we get so used to it because we're involved with it every day uh, or we have been for many, many years on, on how to run election. You know, we, we, but if you've ever worked an election and, 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 and I, and I think it's kind it is kind of amazing because it doesn't matter if you do it in Sunderland or Deerfield or Burnington or Boston, it's all pretty much the same. Right. Yep. And, and it's very regulated on how, how an election is run. Well, people want people want you to believe that that's not true. Well, I'm, you can try to make us believe, but if you've seen, if you've seen it and, and if you've seen, I mean, how, and look, there, there's one town clerk that just re resigned from a, an Eastern Mass town because mm -hmm. when, when the, the voting looked a little, numbers looked a little sh short from a community, the state, the state called and said, Hey, uh, how come you're, and, and they hadn't counted 3,000 ballots. Right. Okay. There, I mean, so never mind the internal checks and balances, but there, there are a lot of checks and balances. And, and they'd be, I mean, good for the town clerk to tell people that. that I, I'd love for the town clerk to spend some time to tell people how, how, how it works. Yeah, I would agree. And I, actually, driving <laughs> over here to the meeting tonight, too, I heard an interesting statistic that they're expecting a, a, about a million early voters this year compared to 10,000 during the last presidential election, which is a huge difference. So you're right, Tom. It's a very important topic. And there's a lot to talk about normally, let alone what's going on now. Look, I, I, think, I, think, if, if, I think if you care, if, if, if you care about um, are trying to find the right words, but if you voting is is something that a U, uh, is in a U.S. citizen's inalienable rights, it, and and I, you know, I, I I didn't write up the first thing where we excluded, you know, women voters or black voters or whatever. I I wasn't involved. Now now there's no reason that if you're a US citizen that you can't vote and, and you should vote and you're encouraged to vote and we all, everybody wants you to vote. So we want, we want it, <clears throat> we want to, we, everybody wants to see on the election. It, it's such an important thing, so. so. It sounds like we should see how quickly we can get Wendy in, I, I would imagine, Jeff, right? Yeah, her, well, her, her, I'm sure her schedule's kind of Get a little busy. Yeah. Her, her dance card is full. <laughs> I would bet. It's a polite way to put it, but yes. Yep. Yep, I will talk to her. All right, that would be greatly appreciated. Should we have first guest of honor? Guest of honor. There you go. Sort of like um, in this corner this week, I'll we'll have to come <laughs> up with some kind of lovely segment. Maybe FCAT can do some graphics for us or something. <laughs> That'd be great. Then we can work on the rest of our um, schedule. All right. So I think that's all we've got for regularly scheduled. Hold on. I'm just trying to pull up my copy of the agenda. Our regularly scheduled items. I see our next meeting is Monday, October 5th, 2020. Nice. And I see another reminder there. Uh, in, in, for final real estate, water district, and personal property taxes are due, unfortunately, October 1st, but that's what helps keep all of this fabulous infrastructure running. So 
Hey Scott, have you have you had an opportunity to check with the uh, financial people about uh, the the uh, the money that's coming in to town? I spoke with both Jeff as well as Treasurer Collector, and as Jeff pointed out, we're getting close to the eighty five percent as far as local receipts, local takes. I would also balance that against uh, the reports from the Office of Management and Budget. That's the folks at the state level, and they're they're preparing for budgeting for a five billion dollar gap. How 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 is it so that eighty five that that includes local receipts and all of that stuff? Currently, yes. Yeah. And and Jeff, the state still hasn't the state still hasn't come up with a budget. Mm -hmm. Did they, oh, there. they give us any preliminary numbers at least? Hmm. Okay. So, Tom, as you say that, again, it was important to bear in mind uh, the release, it was in today's Globe, about the current revenue shortfalls. I used the term gap, and I, I, I was incorrect in saying that because they don't have an operating budget voted yet, but they're estimating a $5 billion shortfall in revenues. They haven't closed out their... Uh... FY20 or FY20? No, not yet. Nope. It's a different year this year, that's for sure. The well, running FY20 ended in June 30th. Yeah, but yeah. They, haven't, they haven't closed it out. So our, our filings, one thing that I have been talking with Jeff about and Jeff's been working with the financial team about has been our submittal for our Schedule A and how close we're getting for that. And we're within a striking distance of being um, balance sheet ready. That's a little short of submittal, but we're getting toward that space. That's good. Right. That's very good. Well, there's gonna be a little bit of catch up work on the accounting side. And again, we've been speaking about this and there, there may be some charges associated with that because of a backlog of work, but we'll, we're working strate on strategic solutions for that short of just throwing more money at it. I captured that correctly, Jeff? Yes. All right. Thank you, Scotty. It's going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you know, you don't, you don't want to, you certainly don't want to go in to the budget cycle with the pressures that are on the expense side of the ledger, resting on laurels from a prior year. You know, we need to be in real time and realistic, as we have been, about our revenue forecasting. We've never exaggerated it up or down. And that's helped us for 20 plus years. Right. And so we're a little lucky in that we don't draw a lot of revenue sources in this case from establishments that haven't been open this year. So. Right. Good point. So that that has, that, that, for once, that's a benefit. But in that respect, but so over the next four to six weeks, it's going to become more and more and more important that those numbers start to begin gelling. Uh, I don't know what we'll have with respect to the state, but our the town's position, the town's responsibility in constructing and reporting the closure and the formatting of the future year is going to be of paramount importance. Right, and usually October, we get an idea of our free cash, as I recall, right? Depends usually on when it's that. submitted. Yep. Last year, it was March. It's true. And that was bad. We don't want to do bad again. <laughs> nope. We want to do December. Yep. Right? That's right. So if I could, Mr. Chair, if there's nothing else left on the agenda, I'm going to resurrect the uh, letters from the, from the founders. I would love that. That was a great little feature. So this is a correspondence from John Adams to Thomas Jefferson, June 30, 1813. In their later, year, in their later years, they extended uh, all of branches and began corresponding again. Adams, quote, the real terrors of both parties has always been and now are, listen to this sentence again, the real terrors of both parties have always been and now are, the fear that they shall lose the election. And consequently, the loaves and fishes 
and that their antagonist will obtain them. Both parties have excited artificial terrors, and if I were summoned as a witness to say upon oath which party has had excited the most terror and which had really felt the most, I could not give a more sincere answer than in vulgar style. Put them both in a bag, shake them, and see that which falls out first. John Adams to Thomas Jefferson, 1813. Now, not, not 2020? Not 2020. <laughs> and yet, how about that? Sorry, Sounds thank you, Mr. Terribly Chair. prescient. I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> um, if there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn for the evening? If it's okay with Thomas Jefferson, motion. <laughs> <laughs> he died broke. Second. Right. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll see you next week, folks. Thank you.